Hi, I'm Mike Chappell, and in this Cert Mike Explains video, I'm going to tackle a topic that is appearing more and more frequently on cybersecurity certification exams, Service Organization Control, or SOC audits. Now, I'll first give you a little background so that you understand the purpose of a SOC audit, and then I'll dive into all of the nitty-gritty details that you need to know when you're answering exam questions. Now, the reason that SOC audits are becoming so important these days is that all of our organizations are increasingly relying on cloud services to meet so many of our business needs. Just think about how many different cloud services your organization uses today. You probably have at least one infrastructure as a service provider in your mix, and you probably also have a large set of software as a service vendors providing your email, customer relationship management, web hosting, payment processing, and many other services. Now, how sure are you that all of those vendors are handling your sensitive information properly? You probably perform regular security assessments of the systems that you run in your own environment, but can you say the same for your vendor? Do you send teams out to visit each vendor and audit the security at all of their data centers? Of course you don't. That would be an impossible undertaking, both for you and for the cloud vendor. You don't have the time or resources to make all of those visits, and the vendor doesn't have the ability to host visits from all of their customers. It's just not a scalable approach. And that's where SOC audits enter the picture. When a cloud vendor wants to assure their customers that they have good security controls in place, they hire independent auditors to come in and audit their controls and provide a written report. The vendor may then provide that report to customers who can use it to determine whether the vendor's security controls meet the customer's own security requirements. Now, if you forget this, spelling out the acronym might help you remember. SOC stands for Service Organization Controls. So it's an audit of the controls put in place by a service organization, such as a cloud service provider. Customers of cloud providers don't have SOC audits done themselves. They receive the results of a SOC audit that was done at the service provider's request. Now, there are some important details that you'll need to understand about SOC audits. But before we get to those, I just want to take a moment to invite you to visit my website at certmike.com. On that site, I have free study plans put together to help you earn your next cybersecurity certification. The plans tie together the content that you'll find in study guides, video courses, and practice tests to help you prepare for your next certification exam and pass that test on the first try. Also, if you're enjoying this Cert Mike Explains video, please take a moment to click the like button below to help other people discover it. If you subscribe to my channel, you'll be among the first to see my other cybersecurity videos as they come out. All right, let's get back to SOC audits. When you take a cybersecurity certification exam, you'll need to understand two different features of SOC audits, the category of audit and the report type. Now, this is a little confusing because both of these things are numbered. And this is a place where many people go astray when they're answering exam questions, so please pay careful attention. The category of a SOC audit describes what the auditors are actually checking when they visit a service organization. There are three categories of SOC audit, and they're called SOC 1, SOC 2, and SOC 3. SOC 1 reports are the most common type of SOC audit report. They're designed to provide customers with the assurance they need in their service providers when the customers are undergoing their own financial audits. Now, this is a very limited scope audit. It's not designed to look broadly at the security and privacy of data. It focuses on financial statement controls. And in most cases, this isn't the category of audit that you're going to want if you're storing sensitive data with the cloud service provider. SOC 2 audits are designed to perform more detailed testing and evaluate the service provider's confidentiality, integrity, availability, and privacy controls. These reports often contain sensitive information, and they're not shared widely. They're for internal use and sharing under NDAs. SOC 3 reports also look at confidentiality, integrity, availability, and privacy, but the report contains only high-level information. These reports are designed for public consumption. Now, this is something important to remember. SOC 2 and SOC 3 audits cover the same types of controls. The difference is the level of information provided in the reports. SOC 2 reports contain confidential information, and they're designed for internal use or sharing with customers under a non-disclosure agreement. 
SOC 3 reports contain high-level information, and they're designed for public sharing. So those are the categories of SOC audits. You'll need to understand the differences between SOC 1, SOC 2, and SOC 3 audits. Now here's where things get a little more confusing, unfortunately. In addition to these three categories, SOC 1 and SOC 2 audits also come in two different report types. And to make it more confusing, they are also numbered 1 and 2. So if you have a SOC 1 audit performed, you could have either a SOC 1 Type 1 report or a SOC 1 Type 2 report. And the same thing is true for SOC 2. The type of the report differs based upon whether the auditor performs testing or not. Type 1 reports simply describe the controls that a service provider has in place and report the auditor's opinion on the suitability of those controls. The auditor does not give an opinion on whether the controls are working in an effective way. Type 2 reports contain the same opinions as Type 1 reports, but they go further and include the results of the auditor actually testing those controls to verify that they're working. The tests are run over a period of time, which is typically six months. Now I know that all these 1s, 2s, and 3s can be confusing, so let's recap. The category of a SOC audit is SOC 1, SOC 2, or SOC 3, and that category describes the scope of what is tested. SOC 1 tests controls related to financial statements. SOC 2 tests confidentiality, integrity, availability, and privacy controls and provides a detailed confidential report, while SOC 3 tests those same controls as a SOC 2 audit, but provides a public report. Type 1 reports provide an opinion on the suitability of controls. Type 2 reports go further and also provide the results of testing those controls over a period of time. So a SOC 1 Type 1 report is a report on financial controls that describes the suitability of those controls, while a SOC 1 Type 2 report is the same but adds in the results of control testing. Similarly, a SOC 2 Type 1 report is a report on confidentiality, integrity, availability, and privacy controls that provides an opinion on the suitability of those controls, while a SOC 2 Type 2 report adds in the results of testing them. SOC 3 reports don't have types. They cover confidentiality, integrity, availability, and privacy controls and provide a high-level report that's suitable for public consumption. Now, the last thing you should know about SOC audits is that they may occur under two different standards. In the U.S., the American Institute of Certified Public Accountants publishes their Statement on Standards for Attestation Engagements 18, or SSAE 18, to guide SOC audits in the United States. Internationally, the International Auditing and Assurance Standards Board publishes the International Standard on Assurance Engagements 3402, or ISAE 3402, for the same purpose. Now, these standards are quite similar in scope and purpose, and you won't need to get into the small differences between them on the exam. Just know that the SSAE standard is for the U.S., and the ISAE standard is international. And that's what you need to know about SOC audits when you take your next cybersecurity certification exam. I hope that you found this explainer video useful. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe to see more.